Mike was born in Croatia, in the hillside village of Desne, the youngest of 11 children. His father was a winemaker, and his mother made sure that wine, mixed with water, was an integral part of Mike's childhood diet. She switched me from mother's milk at the age of about two and a half to the wine. From his father, Mike learned the importance of hard work. He would say, do your best today, what you are doing, and tomorrow do a little better. So in a year, you will be far ahead. And from his mother, Mike learned the importance of a good education. And my mother was uh, actually the reason that I did go forward. As Mike got older, his father shared with him a secret about making wine, a secret he would treasure and nurture his entire life. My father taught me how to develop feelings for wine. And he, he, he told me that wine can be an art, and art comes from heart. His journey took him through Germany and Canada, but in 1958, Mike finally arrived in his vision of paradise, the Napa Valley. Mike worked at Chateau Souverain and Christian Brothers, and then fortune smiled upon him. And maybe after three months, I got a call from Mother Church. I was shaken, because by that time I already knew that he was Dean of California winemaking and that there is opportunity for me to continue learning because all my life is learning. And that was what I was looking for. Mike worked with Andrei Chalachev for nine years. Together they made important innovations with millipore filtering and controlling the process of malolactic fermentation. But Mike saw little future for himself at Beaulieu, so he decided to knock on the door of Robert Mondavi. I went called Robert Mandavi and asked him if he could interview me. And he asked me everything, what do we do at the BV? And he liked what I told him. I told him about malolactic fermentation, induced uh, miracle filter, and uh, all this classical French style of making red wine. And, uh, he uh, looked at me, and because I mentioned Andre so many times, he said, Mike, don't worry. I think I have a job for you, and I'm going to make you a little Andre Church. Mike was immediately drawn to Mandavi's passion, spirit of innovation, and commitment to making wines that would compete with the best in the world. Every Monday, have a wine tasting or we will taste wine that we produce comparing with the French ones, because he thought someday we can make wine that will be as good as French. At Mondavi in 1969, Mike crafted an award-winning Cabernet Sauvignon, and soon he had a new opportunity. I told Robert Mondavi that I have offer, and if I can have one month off, that I can think about it, because it was for me very hard to leave Robert Mandat. At Montalina, Mike started with majestic stone walls and little else. But his first Chardonnay, crafted in 1972, had a touch of magic. When wine was bottled and took first test in San Diego, and we blindly compared that 72 Chardonnay with three French wine. Three to one was in favor of the Chateau Montalini. Can you imagine that? My Gergic was 10 feet tall. <laughs> in 1976, to celebrate America's 200 years of independence, the Paris-based wine merchant Stephen Spurrier organized a blind tasting of the very best wines of France. And just to have a little fun, Spurrier included a few select wines from those upstart vintners in the Napa Valley. Judges was uh, chosen by Mr. Spurrier trying to get the best judges that they could find in France. 
didn't know much about American wines. The French judges sniffed, tasted, appraised, and then rendered their verdicts. The results were a shock. Mike Gergich's 1973 Chardonnay whipped the best white wines of Burgundy and scored more points than any wine in competition that day. I, I, I thought that, uh, you know, I was born again. Though we did know that wine was good from beginning and on, but to beat French in Paris by nine French judges, and that was something unbelievable, unbelievable. Now Mike was ready for more, and he joined forces with the Napa grape grower, Austin Hills, and his sister, Merrill Lee. It was a beautiful marriage, and soon the Gergich Hills Winery was born. When I came to America, I had in my mind idea that someday I might have my own winery, which I couldn't have under communism. And uh, after Paris tasting, I knew that time has come that I have to realize my dream. Now the immigrant come from Croatia made an indelible mark in his adopted land. As his success grew, Mike was inspired to give back. He started by creating a modern winery in his native Croatia. When the communism was voted out of power in April, I find myself in May in Croatia, back, to see what can I do for you now since you have now get rid of communism and you need to recuperate. What can I do to rebuild the country? Mike also became a fervent supporter of Roots of Peace, in particular its worldwide campaign to replace landmines with grapevines. Roots of Peace have created the park in, in the front of the United Nations. It was devoted to the peace of the world. And uh, whenever I go to New York, I go over there and pray for peace on that spot. For many years, Mike has been planning for the future, grooming his daughter Violet and his nephew Ivo Hermaz. Hopefully that uh, my daughter Violet and my nephew Ivo uh, will continue with these principles which I mentioned. Quality, consistency of the quality, harmony, balanced lines, friendship, and uh, good people and respecting people because people are making the wine, not just winemaking. And I do my best that they uh, continue making better wines year after year, uh, and uh, they so far showed uh, great hope. I feel that I, I'm uh, happy what I have done, and if I live another life, I'll try to do the, the same formula, do <laughs> the best that you do today and tomorrow a little better.